Hi, so welcome back to another video. Now this video really should be a continuation of the turntable build and there's been lots of progress on that. I'll put a little picture up here showing you where I've got to with that. However, I'm going to break up the sequence because in three weeks time, September the 23rd and 24th of September 23, um, I will be demonstrating starting in P4 at Scale Forum, which is the Scale 4 Society's flagship event. Now I'm going to take along a little display of all sorts of things and pass on some of my experiences of starting working in P4. And as the Society, in connection with British Fine Scale, have recently released this point kit, I thought what I'd do is have a go at building one today. Now I thought I'd make one in anticipation of perhaps people asking me about it at the exhibition. And I thought, well whilst I'm making it, I might as well make a video. And towards the end of the video I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with this and how it will be on display at Scale Forum. So a little bit later on in the video I'll put some details of the event but let's get on with putting this thing together. So then here is the kit and its components um, and I've taken the opportunity to print out the template full size. This is A3. It could have been printed A4 in two halves and stuck together but as I've got an A3 printer it seemed handy to print it in one go. So the main part of the put that there. The main part of the kit is the turnout base which I believe is a 3D printed item and it's really quite nice. It's quite flexible, um, seems quite robust and if we place that on the template we can see it fits perfectly. Now also included in the kit are the various bits of rail and stuff that we're going to need to put this thing together. Now I've printed off all of the instructions, 13 pages of it, um, although there's not too much on each page so don't be overwhelmed by the 13 pages. The instructions seem very clear and easy to follow. I've read through them. They explain everything we're going to need. I think I've got most of that to hand. So um, let's let's make a start. Now I must emphasize it isn't necessary to have a cluttered bench but uh, I find it helps. So let's get started. I think it's worth taking a moment to identify the components in the kit. So we've got some lengths of ball head rail, so two of these will form the stock rails which are the long lengths of rail that are either side of the turnout. There's some switch blades and these have got a pre-machined angle on the end which is protected by this little sticker. We'll, we'll look at that in a minute. So obviously they'll form our switches here and here. There's the point and splice rails which again have a little bit of an angle machined on the end. These will go here and here and then we've got one length of rail left and with that we're going to form the check rails and the, um, the closure rails which go just here and of course the the wing rails. So we'll, we'll look at those first of all then. The instructions say to start with the closure rails so I'll mark those out on this piece of material and this piece of rail and we'll make a start. Now because I've tested that this um, turnout base is exactly the same size as my printout I can take my measurements directly off of the drawing. The instructions don't give us lengths to measure out so we're left with measuring and marking out of the drawing which I think is perfectly adequate. So the template has marked here in blue this little line and that is the knuckle. And that's the point at which the closure rail and the wing rail diverge and it's really important that when we assemble this thing we get that knuckle in exactly the right place. Now the turnout base does have a tiny little indent which indicates it but in terms of marking this rail out to cut it's important that we get that correct. So I'm going to lay this on here. The little pen just mark the head of the rail and that's where I'm going to cut it and I'll then do the same for the diverging closure rail.
So I've got the first closure rail in and the next thing I'm going to do is put the the second one in. So let's and to do that we have to flex the base. Make sure we've got the bore head rail the correct way up and then it should slide in. There we go. Next up will be the wing rails here and these have a slight bend in them of the position marked with this red line on the drawing. So if I for example lay, let's lay that piece of rail across there hopefully the camera will show that you can see the slight set that needs to be put into that rail. So what I'm going to do is mark the position of that bend first there and then we'll mark the length that we need. This I'm sure isn't that critical. Something like that. I can now cut this, put the bend in the rail and I'll repeat for the other side and then we'll thread them onto the base in exactly the same way as we did the closure rails. Now normally I would form these bends just simply with a pair of parallel action pliers but as I've got my vise here and I'm working at the bench I'm just going to give that a little tweak and it really is a tiny amount. Now that is probably over bent if it is, and I'll check it on the template, then what I'll do is I'll come back and just squeeze it between the jaws very, very lightly and take some of that bend down. Now the next job is to fit the point and the splice rails. Now the point rail is this one here and that's on the main route and it's the splice is on the diverging route. The rails themselves are here and they're pre-machined with the appropriate angle on the end which is handy. Now it's really important that we get these the right way round because at first view if I unpackage them both they both have an angle on the end it might be difficult to tell which is which. Well ball head rail has a head and a foot and the head is the slightly bigger of the of the two sides. I'll put a picture on the screen to show what I mean. So by determining which is the head which is the top we can figure out which rail goes where. So they'll go something like that. And then we'll be able to slide those into the turnout base. Now what I'm going to do is mark these to length, cut them, file the ends nice and square first, and then I'll fit them in. But before I fit them, because they've been wrapped in this sticker to protect the ends they might be a bit sticky and I don't want those to collect dirt so what I'm going to do is get a little bit of paper towel and a squirt of some IPA some isopropyl alcohol and just give those a bit of a clean also we're going to do a bit of soldering on these later on with the wires for the common crossing so giving those a bit of a clean won't hurt at all.
Next up are our check rails and I'm going to do exactly the same thing as I've done before. I'm going to take my measurements directly off of the drawing. And I'll make two of these. I'll bend the ends in exactly the same way as I did for the wing rails and then we'll be able to slide them onto the turnout base. So you can see I've got the first check rail installed. Now to have a go at the second. something like that. For the tie bar it's necessary to fit two of these tiny pins through the holes in the tie bar and then bend them over at 90 degrees. Hopefully the cameras pick that up. So we're going to do that with both pins making sure we put them both in from the same direction. There we go. Form a nice sharp bend like so. And then with that we want to cut these off leaving about three millimeters sticking out. I'm going to save these pins because we'll use those for something in a minute. There we go. Actually that one's a bit long so let's trim it down. There we go. So the tie bar simply drops into place and let me find something to poke it with and that's free to slide left and right. So now we can fit our stock rails and these just slide straight in. And the fit of these is excellent. So there's our straight stock rail. And let's put the diverging stock rail in next. Now if we zoom in, hopefully you can see we've got our tie bar is ret retained by the two stock rails and we've got these little bits of wire which we're going to use, we're going to solder those onto the switch blades um, and, and that's how the motion will be transferred to the switch blades. So, I've already cut the switch blades to length so we can slot those in next. So our next job is to fit the switch rails and these just slide in. Oh, I've got the wrong one there. 
That's it. That should slide in, leaving an electrical isolation gap where it meets the closure rail. So that's one done. Let's slide the next one in. Would help if I did it the right way round. There we go. And again, an isolation gap up here. So let's zoom in. Focus. So hopefully you can see the ends of the switch blades are free to slide left and right. And what we're going to do now is solder these little wires here onto the switch blades one in the closed position and obviously one side will have to solder opened up slightly to allow the flange to run through it and because these pins are they form like a little hinge joint there won't be any pressure on that solder joint as this slides left and right So then that's the basic completed thing. I've glossed over soldering these in because my kit was supplied with the wrong spacers. These are for double O gauge so I had to sort of bodge that a bit but anyway it's all worked out and if I stick a piece of rolling stock on it runs beautifully. There's no wheel drop which can happen at the common crossing. It's really very smooth indeed. I'm, I'm, quite impressed okay so all that's left to do to make this sort of ready to lay is we need to put some electrical connections between the various bits and pieces now this is all described in the instructions but it occurred to me those little pins that we chopped off earlier they might make ideal little bits to solder in so that's what I'm going to do now get those soldered in place
So then, this thing went together really well and the rolling stock runs through it beautifully. Really impressed with this. Would I recommend it? Definitely. There's an awful lot of very detailed design consideration gone into producing this and uh, well, it looks a treat. I'm pleased with it. So I mentioned at the start of the video that I will be at Scale Forum and we'll have a little bit of a display and so I thought how better to display this than sort of in the context of a little setting. So I've built this little thing and that's where the turnout's going to go. We're going to stick a couple of other bits of track on here and hopefully um, that'll look quite good. Now to be honest with you I haven't made this specifically for this purpose. Um, in our local club we were sort of thinking about making little modules that plug together and this is just a prototype for that really so I thought I'd repurpose it. So what I'm going to do is get that on there, we'll add some other bits of track and then I've got all sorts of other odds and ends up here, little things that I've made in the past and we can, I don't know, we'll maybe stick some of these things in here, who knows, maybe a Colonel Stevens station or something but we'll try and make this into a little scene um, and this could be a little control panel so hopefully if you're coming on to scale forum you'll be able to interact with this thing and press buttons and see how it all works i'm going to engrave a little plate on here with a name so if you've got any ideas for a name for this little point in a box um, do let me know in the comments anyway till next time thanks very much for watching see you soon cheerio